Hey guys, so I thought I might do another Linux distribution first impressions video, although this one of course is a little bit different on the count that it's not actually a Linux distribution but rather a BSD based distribution. This is PC BSD 10.3. So every now and then I give BSD a go on the desktop just to see um, where it is in relation to other Linux distributions. PC BSD, of course, is the most well-known desktop, uh, you know, sort of desktop version of BSD. So it kind of makes sense that this is sort of my go-to distribution. I know there are others out there that I might take a look at, um, but I'm not seriously looking to um, to use a BSD as my daily driver. Um, I'm just looking at it in terms of what alternatives there are in case Linux, for one reason or another, takes a turn that I uh, don't agree with or. Uh, whether or not uh, any of you guys might prefer the BSD license over the um, GNU GPL license and you know all the other stuff surrounding that. It can get pretty complicated but as a general rule of thumb it's always good to see what your options are out there and um, and how good they are. So as you can see here um, I have got a somewhat customized but overall pretty standard KDE desktop. This is the desktop that the PC BSD distribution tends to gravitate you towards. It does say that it's working on uh, another desktop called um, Lumina, I think it's called. Um, and I've uh, had a look at this sort of before uh, before making this video. And it, to me, it doesn't feel as complete or um, polished in any way close to, to what you get out of KDE. And it does seem that this, just, just, this distribution is pushing the KDE um, desktop version of the distribution uh, as their flagship distribution. So this is really what you most likely would pick up if you were looking to use PC BSD on the desktop. So I don't know how much or really how to re sort of review or give my first impressions of this distribution because it does give you with a, a pretty standard KDE desktop with the means to to add more applications and uh, and customize it in the way that KDE um, generally allows you to do so. So you get a pretty standard desktop there and um, it works. Uh, it's got all the bells and whistles. You've got the um, you got Dolphin there. Um, you've got the console. Um, we can do the about KDE. So what KDE do we have here? Platform version 4.14.3. Um, I can't remember off the top of my head how new that is. Uh, however, um, it this is the latest version of PCBSD which was brought out April 2016. So this is about as new as it's going to get and they release a new distribution about once a year, maybe once every other year. So um, that's kind of the framework that you're looking, in, looking at. Many people say that this is basically the Ubuntu of BSD. Um, and uh, I'll just go show you the, the App Cafe, which again doesn't perhaps look as polished as um, app stores from like GNOME and all that kind of stuff, but it looks like your pretty standard package manager. Um, and then you can sort of install a few additional uh, applications there. One thing I have found quite interesting about the App Store is that um, there is a decent amount of software selection available. In OBS Studio, which I found to be rather um, almost random in what distribution repositories it appears in, it appears in the OBS, uh, it appears in the PC BSD repositories as, as standard, which certainly means that they're taking a, a wide net when it comes to the software in, included in their distribution. So if you were setting it up on a, on a distribution, uh, if you were setting it up on a desktop machine, I, I don't think you'd uh, you'd be short of software. I think there is plenty of software here. There's probably more software in the uh, repositories of, uh, of PCBSD than there is in, in many other smaller Linux-based distributions. So um, that is certainly something very positive, even if it doesn't come in the most polished of format. Um, it's uh yeah the 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 software selection in the repositories is definitely very very good and just to prove it to you i've actually got um i think i can i might be playing with fire here but i might be able to do a bit of yes uh recording uh inception i'm actually going to turn that off because i don't know what kind of problems that might cause for me later on down the road but yes you can definitely see that obs actually works properly on uh, it says here FreeBSD, but of course PCBSD is based on FreeBSD. 
So a little bit about PCBSD is that it's currently 47th on DistroWatch, as you can see here, with an average of 278 points per day. So that puts it, if I'll just pull up the uh, the old front page of a DistroWatch here. DistroWatch, of course, doesn't really mean that much. It's really just a little bit of fun way to, to rank the distributions. Of course, you can see here Mint is at the top. Um, which is two places higher than Ubuntu. We all know that Ubuntu is a, mo a more well-known and wider used distribution than Mint, but among people who are really interested in Linux distributions, um, then it's a bit more um, understandable that Mint might uh, might rise to the top, just because it's perhaps a little bit more interesting uh, among um, you know OS enthusiasts. But yeah, so 47 is it's down here. It's down here. So it's. It used to be higher, FreeBSD, uh, so it's, well, it's right below SteamOS. So it's certainly not sort of out in the dust here, um, but it is, uh, and then there's FreeBSD. FreeBSD, of course, can be used on the desktop. Um, might be the, the direction you'd go for if you wanted something super customizable. Uh, but PCBSD gives you a pretty decent out-of-the-box experience, and it comes with a reasonably well-developed wiki, but I wouldn't put it um, on a par with something like the Manjaro wiki or or the the arch wiki or anything like that but it's certainly like good documentation of course is uh, a solid cornerstone to a good distribution and then you've got it up here on github so uh in terms of usability i've got to say as someone who, who distro hops quite a lot uh i do find this distribution very easy to jump into very easy to use but i have only been using it really over the course of maybe the last week or so a couple of weeks maybe uh through a virtual machine so i'm certainly not getting the full experience and i don't know what uh how uh, easy or likely it is just to be able to install the bsd kernel onto a machine and have it run and work it works fine in uh, a virtual machine but again that is only to be expected um so it pretty much holds everything else that your standard distribution does um or your standard applications you can get games as you know graphics you know there's this gimp there um it uh, comes with uh, conqueror as well which i think is a pretty decent browser it would just would be nice if there were more uh, add-ons for it if you ask me but uh, but there you go and it comes with all your standard utilities these these are really just sort of kde standard it comes with keypass x um which is uh, which is again very useful. That's what I use for password management. So, uh, as a pretty avid Linux user that uses quite a wide spread of applications, I gotta say I think I would be pretty satisfied using PCBSD if, for one reason or another, I couldn't or wouldn't want to use the Linux kernel. Maybe it took a turn in in a direction I didn't agree with, or for you know for for what for whatever reason. Of course, it's more likely that um, uh, Linux would get forked or whatever, uh, but that aside yeah we you know this this is this is not bad i mean it's certainly not on a par with your linux mints your manjaros your ubuntu's or anything like that i would say it does seem to be a little bit rough around the edges in a way that just um that just sort of impacts on the atmosphere of the user experience sometimes you know the, there aren't exactly that many themes available in the app store uh which would be nice or you know it'd be it'd be quite nice if there were more themes available just installed um, out of the box just to give you a bit more customization in options that's not just for the KDE desktop it seems that um, all of the, the desktop environments that you install with it just gives you like the default theme and expects you to run with that or expects you to be able to sort of pull your own theme down from uh, KDE or GNOME look.org which is not difficult and perfectly fine to do but I feel just for, for user experience I always I always like it when there's a decent amount of customized you know visual and appearance customization options just out of the box so, uh, all in all, like I say, this is really only a first impressions video, which is why I, I don't like calling these types of videos a review. If you have a virtual machine and some time to kill, I recommend having a look at it. It's just, um, you know, having a look at the other side of the fence, see what the alternatives are. I think I will be sticking for Linux desktop distributions for the time being. But it is nice to know that there are other paths uh, and other options available out there for me. Uh, and I will certainly be coming back to, to BSD um, and running it in a virtual machine um, because it's 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 promising. It shows a great deal of promise, a great deal of potential. What I've got here now is a workable operating system. Uh, the criticisms I am leveling against it really are only, pro you know, like why it wouldn't be or why, you know, why I don't think it's suitable for mass um, adoption um, among people that aren't really OS enthusiasts. But um, I certainly recommend 
you know, sort of people enthusiastic about Linux to give this a try just to see uh, what the alternatives are. It's pretty solid. It's pretty decent. I have not had any reliability problems, but again, you tend to have fewer reliability problems when you're running in a virtual machine. Um, but that being, you know, the, the KDE desktop, it doesn't seem like it's the newest KDE desktop, uh, but it does seem pretty rock solid. So maybe that's a, a you know, a, a specific choice on the, uh, on the part of the maintainers. If so, well done. It's stable. Um, it comes with you know all the uh, all the modern conveniences, and it's it's got easy to install software and a decent software selection in the repositories. Very promising distribution, very good distribution in all honesty. Uh, to me, it really just comes down to uh, the BSD kernel itself and how it competes and holds up against the Linux kernel, and whether or not that can be installed on you know like whether or not you can just sort of reliably buy a laptop from the from the from the shop and then just you know whack on a a, a BSD distribution. I feel reasonably confident that I could go down, you know, that I could just buy just a random off-the-shelf laptop and install uh, Ubuntu or Fedora on it, uh, and have done many a time. Um, it would be nice if I could do the same with BSD. Uh, so, that's about it for me today. Give me your thoughts uh, down in the comment section below. It's always um, good for other perspectives uh, to collide. Um, thank you very much for watching. And um, let me know in the uh, comment section below what kind of videos you'd like to see me do in the future. I'm uh, I'm quite aware that I've not really been doing much with this channel as of late, and I've been very busy with, um, you know, with other stuff and other projects. Uh, but now, for the rest of the year, I really kind of want to focus on this channel and push out some really good content. Um, I'm still working on trying to get a podcast together, um, but it is incredibly difficult to try and find people who are like reliably available on the same time. So I might go into it on my own, or um, or I might try and do a, you know mix up the video formats, mix up what I'm going to do, uh, you know, app picks, maybe throw in a few Linux games there. Um, I've, I'm seeing a great number of Linux apps just sort of cut, you know being developed lately. Um, so I'm probably going to be doing a fair number of app picks, but. Um, let me know if you've got any ideas. Let me know what you think down in the comments section below. Of course, um, and I don't do this very often, but if you've watched it this far in the video, uh, I just like to make you aware that I do have a Twitter uh, at Chris Ware Digi. I'll put the link to that down in the comments uh, in the description below. Um, I do a lot of stuff. Um, you know, when I'm trying out a new distribution, I'll sort of tweet a lot, sort of as I'm going through it. So um, there can be a little, you know, there could be a few more details that you find there that you might not in a standard video. And of course, this channel does have a Reddit, chriswaredigital.reddit.com link, of course, down in the description below. Uh, and that's if you just want to uh, just have a chat about anything vaguely related to to anything I talk about on this channel. Hell, you know, I you know, there's not really any particular rules over there. Um, but if you've got any interesting articles that you want to share or um, you know, dank memes, uh, <laughs> then throw them up on the Reddit. So thank you very much for watching. That's about it for me today. Uh, until next time, I've been Chris Ware, and uh, you've been awesome. Take care now.